Hi everyone, and welcome to the Watcher of Watches YouTube channel, where I will be sharing my passion for watches, buying and owning experiences of timepieces that I have collected over the last few years. If you like my videos, please drop me a comment below, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications, and follow me on Instagram. I've seen a comment a few times on other YouTube channels and forums that I've come across and it says you buy a Rolex to impress others but you buy a Grand Seiko to impress yourself. I know many people that would never spend thousands of dollars to buy something that has the word Seiko in the name so I kind of agree with the latter but I do not agree anymore with that you buy a Rolex to impress others. Quite frankly they make some of the best watches in the world and I know I'll be owning more than just one. So I thought, why not do a comparison video of both watches that I have, and I'll give a full experience of unboxing both. I think for both brands, the packaging can be upgraded, although I think for Rolex, it's the last of their concern. As always, the Rolex comes with a green instruction booklet for the GMT. And also, it's iconic green box. The Grand Seiko comes wrapped in a printed tissue paper with all the paperwork underneath. This houses the receipt and plus some literature on the testing and accuracy that they go through. And finally, you get a certificate with the serial number and the movement number stating it has passed all the Grand Seiko inspection. Also, the warranty booklet and all Grand Seiko watches come with three years warranty. And finally, an instruction manual. It's quite a large one and it covers a range of their watches. Inside the main Grand Seiko watch box, it comes with this soft Seiko pouch, and this is where I think it starts to let itself down. The Rolex, with its no-nonsense packaging, and with the plastic packet, it includes a reference number, the hang tag, and also the links for the Jubilee bracelet, and I had to have two taken out. Finally, the warranty card and the warranty booklet as well. And as this is a February 2020 piece, this watch comes with five years warranty. As always, the bezel protector and this one comes with the N170 protector, which I believe is for all the GMTs and the Submariners. The Grand Seiko comes with this really poor cushion. In fact, I'm not even sure what it's made out of, but this is where they need to improve their packaging. And finally, the hang tag. So finally, let's take a look at the two watches. The reference number of the Rolex is the GMT Master 2 126710 BLRO and the Grand Seiko is from the Elegance Collection and is SBGW231. Both of these watches are hot watches in their brands. The Pepsi has a huge waiting list and retails at approximately $11,000. 
Unfortunately, I had to pay a 50% premium to get this from an independent dealer. The Grand Seiko retails at 4400 and also has a three to four month waiting list. I was lucky enough to get this for three and a half thousand dollars during the height of the pandemic. The best way to describe these two watches is that the Rolex is industrial perfection, where everything feels laser etched with sharp edges. The Grand Seiko has a completely different feel with its soft looks and the feeling of it being hand finished. And they're both very different watches, one having a bracelet and a clasp and the other a leather strap with a pin buckle. One of the things I really wanted to show in this video is the difference between a highly polished watch and a Zeratsu polished watch, which is mirror-like. I understand it takes years to master and some brands use it to get the black polish finish on screw heads. Grand Seiko did this for the whole case and the finishing is completely distortion free. I've compared this with many highly polished watches and this is a truly unique finish. Finally, you have the branding on the crown for both watches, with the Rolex also having some crown guards. Let's take a closer look at the Pepsi. So this is 40 millimeters in diameter and 12.5 millimeters thick. And I really like the Jubilee bracelet. It's one of my favorite in the Rolex brand and it's super comfortable with this oyster lock clasp. The three center links are highly polished with the outer link in brush steel. And the sides are also highly polished as I showed earlier. And you can see a little bump for the iconic Cyclop lens. I really like the color of the bezel of this version. I believe it's a Mark II or a Mark III bezel. It's definitely not a Mark I as I've seen that and I didn't like the pastel blue and red. And the red hand is for the GMT function so it shows a second time zone. And the three dots on the crown represent the triple lock waterproof system. And this watch has a 100 meters water resistant rating. Now this watch comes with a 3285 in-house movement from Rolex and comes with 70 hours power reserve. The Oyster Lock clasp is perfectly engraved and can be adjusted by five millimeters and there isn't a better sound than this. And finally, this comes with a bi-directional bezel and represents a 24 hour time zone. The Grand Seiko Elegance is 37.3 millimeters and is a proper dress watch with its clean dial, leather strap and pin buckle. And let's take a look at that Zeratsu finishing again. It's completely flawless and it's all around the case, including the crown. Now the case height is 11.6 millimeters, but it looks thinner as some of that height comes from the box sapphire crystal. I call this watch the Baby Calatrava, and it's a kind of watch you want to loop. Taking a closer look at the dial, it's in a matte ivory finish, and Grand Seiko has one person dedicated to finishing the sword hands and the indices, and they are finished to such a high standard that this watch should cost a lot more than it does. By the way, if this had a date window, I would not have bought it. But let's take a look at the movement. This is the Caliber 9S64 manual wind in-house movement, and it has 24 jewels. And again, it's very nicely finished. The leather is also well finished on this watch. And I actually like 
the matte black finish. Some people don't, but I think it actually works on this watch. I really do not get tired of looking at that dial. So there you go, two very different watches from different countries using different techniques for the final product, but both very beautiful. So finally, let's finish off with a wrist shot. And the Pepsi has a real wow factor to it. Whereas the Grand Seiko has an understated feel to it and it's a perfect dress watch. And now finally, side by side. And I love both of these watches. But there you go guys, I hope you've enjoyed the comparison of these two watches and I'll leave you with a few more images.